Hi, I'm Emily Massey, a registered dietitian nutritionist on the Healthy Living Team at Giant Food. This video is all about gut health and how to support a healthy microbiome. And although we're gonna be focusing on gut health today, our team is here to support you in whatever your health goals may be. Whether it's managing diabetes, maintaining heart health, eating on a budget, or maybe just new ways to try something new. We offer a wide variety of services that you can access on giantfood.com slash healthy living. Today's session is gonna be about 30 minutes long and includes supporting materials and references like a shopping list, meal plan, and recipe ideas. And I'll go over those at the end. Now, when we talk about gut health, what we're really talking about is the health of our microbiome. The microbiome is a busy place with trillions of microorganisms made up of thousands of different species like bacteria, fungi, parasites, and viruses. Picture a bustling city flooded with people rushing to get to work, rushing to get to their appointments. Now imagine this at a microscopic level and you have an idea of what your microbiome looks like. These microorganisms live on and inside the human body with the greatest numbers in the small and large intestines. The bacteria in our microbiome help digest our food, regulate our immune system, protect against other bacteria that cause disease, and produce vitamins including B vitamins and vitamin K, which is needed for blood coagulation. It also plays a role in generating that feel-good hormone serotonin. The microbiome plays so many key roles in promoting the smooth daily operations of the human body that it's actually labeled a supporting organ. So why is good gut health so important? Well, let me tell you. Much like our fingerprints, we all have a unique network of microbiota that's originally determined by our DNA and then influenced by our lifestyle choices, where we live, who we live with, how we live, and our long-term dietary patterns. Good bacteria helps us digest our food, helps us to get those needed nutrients, and helps us to fight disease. Bad bacteria can cause digestion problems to illness and chronic disease. A healthy gut balances both the pathogenic or bad bacteria and the symbiotic or good bacteria without any problem. But when this balance is disrupted, we may experience chronic GI issues, skin conditions, weight changes, or even changes in our mood. Through research, scientists have begun to draw links between illnesses and the bacteria in your gut. And here's what we've learned. The microbiome and the immune system are critically intertwined. In fact, 70% of the immune system is actually located in your gut. By communicating with immune cells, the gut microbiome can control how your body responds to infection. When your microbiome is out of that balance, so is your ability to fight infection. The gut also communicates with your brain about many things, including hunger and happiness. Scientists have found that gut bacteria produce neurotransmitters that are critical for mood, anxiety, concentration, reward, and motivation. The gut also produces 90% of, again, that feel-good hormone, serotonin. Knowledge of the gut-brain axis opens a whole new channel, not simply for understanding mental disorders, but also for treating them too, which is great news. And finally, your gut bacteria also affects your body's metabolism. It determines how things like how many calories you get from food and what kinds of nutrients you draw from it, like glucose that impacts your blood sugar. The composition of your microbiome influences the risk of health outcomes, and a healthy, diverse gut microbiome is linked to a lower risk of certain chronic diseases like diabetes, inflammation, and some cancers. Now, I know what you're thinking. This sounds like a lot of work. And in truth, these three steps are not only going to improve your gut health, but also your brain health, your heart health, and so much more. And I'm willing to bet that many of these foods and activities are already a part of your lifestyle. So let's get started and start with step number one. Prebiotics are food for bacteria. You may also know it as the nutrient fiber, which is a non-digestible carbohydrate that stimulates the growth of beneficial bacteria. Most Americans consume under 15 grams of fiber per day. And a good goal is to strive between 25 and 34 grams per day. 
We'll include recommendations by age and sex in our resources. The best thing about prebiotic fiber is that it offers so much more than just food for your bacteria. It also helps to improve your blood cholesterol, a leading cause of heart disease, and helps you stay feeling full, which contributes to a healthy weight. Okay, so let's talk about three ways to get more prebiotic fiber in your life. Vegetables are arguably the healthiest of all food groups, and they are a great source of fiber. Those highest per serving are gonna be artichokes, asparagus, broccoli, carrots, collard greens, lima beans, fall squash like acorn or butternut squash, garlic, onions, and peas. These will all be in the shopping list in our resources. Fruits highest in fiber include avocados, bananas, guava, blackberries, passion fruit, pomegranate, and raspberries. In fact, just one avocado can actually meet almost half of your daily requirements for fiber. Those highlighted in orange, that's bananas, onions, garlic, and asparagus, are high in a fiber called inulin, which has a reputation for being a super grower of this healthy bacteria. So when you think about increasing your produce intake, keep in mind that fresh, frozen, or canned are all great options. So choose whatever works best for you. Fiber comes from any food that's plant-based. So that includes beans, legumes, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. One cup of lentils or black beans will provide about half of your daily requirements and are a great source of plant-based protein. One cup of whole grains, like a whole wheat pasta or quinoa, will provide a quarter of your daily requirements. When you're looking for whole grain products, be sure to check that ingredients list and the nutrition facts label. We want whole to be the first word on the list and look for about five grams of fiber per serving. Finally, nuts and seeds. These are both gonna provide fiber and heart healthy fats. They offer around five grams of fiber per serving. Now, before moving on to my third prebiotic recommendation, I wanna take a minute to bring up supplements. A traditional supplement like Benefiber or Metamucil is a good option if you're finding it hard to meet that daily goal, but it's only gonna provide about three grams of fiber per tablespoon. My go-to is a high fiber add-in like chia or flaxseed. That's gonna provide more than five grams of fiber per tablespoon. I just keep a jar on my counter and add a tablespoon to oatmeal, salads, yogurt, soups, or into baked goods. Polyphenols aren't fiber, but they're considered prebiotics because they feed the beneficial bacteria in your gut. Polyphenols are micronutrients that naturally occur in plants and are powerful antioxidants that can activate your immune system and promote good bacteria growth in your gut. As you can see, you may already have a few of these polyphenols in your diet already, like coffee, medium or light roast is best here, or maybe tea, like green, black, or oolong. Green tea is the highest. Maybe like dark chocolate, especially if you're aiming for at least 70% dark. Cacao is roasted at a lower temperature than cocoa, and it actually has more antioxidant power. These cacao nibs are a little bitter and they're unsweetened, but they still have that rich chocolate flavor and are a great add-in to smoothies, oatmeal, or trail mix. You can also look for spices like cloves, dried peppermint, or star anise, and red wine, but in moderation, of course. Now that we've fed our microbiome, it's time to introduce more healthy bacteria. There are so many different types of bacteria, so you're probably wondering which one is best, and the answer is, we don't know. There are several that have been studied and have shown to be beneficial, but the problem is we don't know which strain is going to be the most beneficial for which person, or even how much you would have to take in order for it to be beneficial. That being said, we do know that healthy bacteria in our gut is a good thing and that foods rich in probiotic are also foods that promote overall general health. So let's explore the three best ways to get more probiotics. Our first stop for probiotics is in the dairy section. We've all seen the Activia commercials promoting live active cultures, but really all yogurts have them. You need them to make yogurt. Activia was just the first to promote it as a benefit. Yogurt with low added sugars is a good bet but I wanna to talk to you about a few other dairy products you might be familiar with, like kefir. Kefir is similar to yogurt, but it has a thinner consistency and has more probiotic strains. It's great alone or in a smoothie. 
Some cottage cheeses and snack cheeses also contain probiotics, but you'll have to check the label for the words live and active culture. Of course, not everyone eats dairy, but that's a-okay because there are now lots of plant-based options out there. Again, just check that label for live and active cultures. There are many more fermented foods outside the dairy aisle. Veggie-based probiotics include sauerkraut, kimchi, and pickles that are fermented or made with fermented vinegar. Think of them as better-for-you condiments or toppers. Soybean-based fermented foods are also great probiotic sources. In store, look for tempeh or miso. Tempeh is a soy-based, high-protein food made by fermenting cooked soybeans. It's got a very strong, nutty flavor. It's great in chili, stew, and tacos because it takes on the flavor of any food or sauce around it. Miso is a paste that's made from fermented soybeans and barley or rice malt, and it's reported to have as many as 160 different bacteria strains. Miso is used frequently in Japanese cooking and can be used in a wide variety of products, not just in the snack category. So if you see miso, think probiotic. Natto is a traditional food usually consumed at Japanese breakfast tables together with miso soup, fish, and rice. Finally, fermented beverages. Kombucha is a popular fermented tea drink, but there's also juices and teas as well as live sodas. Probiotics are super hot and they're showing up everywhere in the grocery store. And the good news is that companies see this as a major selling point, so you're gonna find it right on the front of the packaging. Again, keep in mind that not all fermented foods contain probiotics. You'll have to look for the words live active culture on the labels. Okay, last stop, supplements. There are times when your healthcare provider may recommend a supplement. So let's talk about what you need to know. First, just know it's complicated. Probiotic supplements vary by strain and even by dose. Some are taken on an empty stomach, others taken with food. Some are shelf stable, others require refrigeration. So there's a lot of factors to take into consideration. Oh, including there's also the fact that we aren't always sure what bacteria we may need or if the ones we're taking are actually gonna be helpful. So here's my best tip. Read the supplement fact label and look for a wide variety of strains and a large number of colony forming units or CFUs, which estimates the number of viable bacteria. And like all supplements, consult your doctor or the giant pharmacist before adding a probiotic to your wellness routine to make sure they aren't contraindicated or there's no interaction or medical reasons to avoid them. You talk up. We've talked about how to feed your bacteria and help it thrive with prebiotics. We've learned how to introduce more healthy bacteria for more diversity with probiotics. So now let's talk about how to keep your microbiome stable by creating a hospitable environment through your lifestyle. Let's get the microbiome disrupting behaviors out of the way first. That's drinking, smoking, and high salt, fat, or sugar diets. If you partake in drinking, it's important to keep moderation for general health and gut health in mind. Chronic alcohol intake has been shown to reduce the diversity of microbes. So does smoking and vaping. Foods we often associate with being less healthy, like highly processed foods, sweets, artificial sweeteners, and high fat foods have all shown to cause an imbalance in the gut microbiota when they're consumed on a regular basis. These types of foods should be eaten in moderation or you can look for a swap opportunity to boost the health of your favorites. Another microbiome disruptor are antibiotics. Now, when it comes to antibiotics, always talk to your doctor to be sure you would actually need an antibiotic. Antibiotics serve to kill those unhealthy bacteria that make you sick, but the good bacteria is also impacted. But you can't avoid getting sick all the time, and antibiotics can be a really important part of the healing process. So when you do take antibiotics, think about how you might repopulate your gut when you complete your course. Maybe consider some miso chicken soup during your recovery. The good news is that most bacteria returns within four weeks. Unfortunately, though, their numbers don't often return to previous levels, so be sure to include a daily dose of probiotics to get those numbers back up. Okay, time to talk about some of those microbiome building habits. And first up is some quality R&R. Getting rest and relaxation is important for so many reasons, but especially when we're talking about gut health. 
We discussed that gut-brain access before and how the microbiome can impact our mental health. But our emotional health can also impact our microbiome. The GI tract is sensitive to emotion. So anger, anxiety, sadness, or elation, all of these feelings and the many, many others we experience can trigger symptoms in the gut. So working on stress reduction through meditation, journaling, yoga, and mindfulness can be beneficial. And of course, sleep plays a huge role in stress reduction as well. Sleep is when our body and our mind can work on healing and repairing. So aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep per night. Now, this one might be a little bit surprising, but physical activity helps increase the number and diversity of beneficial bacteria in our microbiome. The brain exercise gut loop also boosts physical health as well as mental health. So make it your goal to follow the American Heart Association recommendation for 150 minutes a week. It breaks down to about 30 minutes, five times a week. This is your goal. If 30 minutes, five times a week seems a little overwhelming right now, that's okay. Start where you are. Five minutes a day is better than zero minutes a day. We've talked a lot about foods that can impact our microbiome, but one of the best ways to support good gut health is to follow a balanced diet and eat a variety of foods. A diet with different food types can support a more diverse microbiome. My plate demonstrates how to build a balanced plate and shows portion sizes. With a strong emphasis on fruits, vegetables, and grains, it's 75% plant-based, which means it's already 75% prebiotic fiber-filled foods. Follow my plate and your gut will thank you. We've covered a lot of areas today, how to eat gut-healthy foods and how to promote gut-healthy habits. And this is a tool that can help with both. Guiding Stars is our nutrition guidance program that reads the label and evaluates recipes so you don't have to. Products and recipes receive stars based on credit for the gut-boosting things we want, like fiber, vitamins, and minerals, and debits for those gut-busting things that we don't want, like saturated fat, sodium, and added sugar. Guiding Stars are found on the price tag, on product descriptions when you shop online, and on recipes in our Savory magazine. The program is also available as an app, so you can scan products if you don't see a tag. You can find Guiding Star rated products in every category of the grocery store to help you find the most nutrient dense options. This concludes today's session. Thank you for trusting the Giant Food Healthy Living Team in your journey to better gut health. These tips are not only gonna improve your microbiome, but also boost your mood and help reverse or delay lifestyle conditions like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or even high blood glucose. Today's video is your first step towards better health. Your next step is to utilize the resources provided in the notes below where you'll find a gut healthy recipe collection and other resources like our podcast, which will support everything you've learned here today. There's even an option to follow up on social media for daily tips and inspiration on a wide variety of healthy living topics. You can also email us for a copy of this class, a shopping list, and a variety of other resources. I invite you to stay connected. We offer a wide variety of free services, including store tours, consultations, cook-alongs, and more, all of which you can access on giantfood.com slash healthy living or in the notes section of this video. We've taken the philosophy that health is for everyone. It's the little things we do every day that add up. So start today. Start big, start small, just start. Thanks again, reach out with any questions, and most of all, stay well. <laughs>